Welcome, one and all, to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show, and welcome to our summer home here in the beautiful Mercia region of southern Spain. Thanks for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at our little holiday home in southern Spain. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our nighttime podcast. Welcome to another episode. We've been all over the place, we've been very busy. And the funny thing is, when you spend uh, an inordinately long time in Spain, you do see your neighbours come and go and different faces come and go. And it's been quite nice. And we've had, uh, we've had some lovely company. So it's been a very, very special time. And, of course, what is amazing is to get that awesome time one-to-one with my two boys. So I'm very privileged. And uh, it is awesome and fantastic. Now then, I've launched a supporter page where you'll find a host of extra content and some other bits and pieces. And you can find that at patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Time now for another adventure with Rocky Jordan and the Hotel Tambourine over in Egypt. This one was first broadcast on the 31st of July, 1949. It's called Varlachi. Time now for Rocky Jordan. Not far from the Mosque Sultan Hassan in Cairo stands the Café Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Café Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with the babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's story, Varlachi. Maybe I should have been carrying a bar lachi, too. That being a sort of good luck charm that Chica always wore. Still, if what happened to her could be called lucky, I'll stick to a good old American rabbit's foot. It all began when I heard a commotion out in front of the cafe tambourine that afternoon. I went to the doorway and looked out on a scene that hit a new high, even for Cairo. The center of all this excitement was a dancing girl in a bright yellow shawl, full whirling red skirt big gold hoop earrings that somehow belonged on that vivid face. Her hair made me think of the sleek black velvet I'd seen in Cairo's Ritzia bazaars. And she had eyes to match. Her dancing was like nothing I'd ever seen. The crowd was made up of natives plus a few tourists who were delighted to run onto some local color. To show their approval, they started throwing coins. I'd just reached into my pocket for a few piastres myself when suddenly there was a rough jostling through the crowd. Let me through! Let me through at once! I had him pegged before I ever saw his officious face. Sergeant Greco of the Cairo police. In another moment, he grabbed the girl by the arm. Stop! Stop at once! No! No, do not touch me! I have done nothing wrong! Swear to me! They hit me first! So, a common gypsy dares to resist an officer of the law. No! I will not go to jail! These people will say that I have done nothing wrong! The crowd will disperse! And quickly! Let me go! You have no reason to arrest me, I beg you! Perhaps please, a few days go. in a cell will teach you a lesson. Hey, what's the matter, Grego? Having trouble meeting your quota today? Ah, the gallant Mr. Jordan. Go back in your cafe and water your wine for tonight's customers. Look, I don't mind the girl picking up a few coins in front of my place. Dancing in the streets is not permitted in this sector! <laughs> Okay, let her go someplace else then. Besides, she is a gypsy. She will steal all of these people blind. I do not steal. This Hitana does not steal. Look, I shake out my skirt. See? No money. Oh, nothing but the jangle of all those bracelets, as far as I can see. Oh, you better flash that badge someplace else, Gregor. An American will not interfere with Cairo police, Mr. Jordan. She will come with me. No, no, swear to me. Let Such me a go. wild no, cat as no, you. Swear to me. <laughs> Wait, come back. I command you. Come back. Come back. The girl had broken away. That's where the crowd took a hand. They suddenly moved in all around the sweating, struggling Greco and swept him down the street. It's an old trick, and the Kyrenes know it well. And he had as much chance bucking that mob as a camel caught in an elephant stampede. And I enjoyed the scene till it faded around the corner. There was no sign of the girl except a red rose that had fallen from her hair. I picked it up and went back inside. I just sat down in my office with a sandwich and a cup of coffee when there was a knock on the alley door. Please, 
that mean, senor? Hey, lady, I thought you'd be clear across town by now. I hit quickly. I, I was tired. And the police... Okay, uh... sure. They won't bother you here. Oh, is, uh, is this your rose? Si, sí, senor. Put it back in your hair. It belongs there. Oh, muchas gracias. You are a, a very kind gentleman. If it were not for you... Oh, you... forget it. When did you eat last? I... You do not think I bake, senor? Oh, of course not. Oh. Now, sit down. Eat this. Oh, millón de gracias, senor. It is the, the first in many hours. Ah, uh, I uh, thought so. I'm surprised you speak Spanish. I am not Arabian gypsy. I am Gitana. Gitana? Mm. They are the Spanish gypsies, senor. The nobility of all the gypsy tribes. You don't say. Where are they? In the hills, to the east. I think you'd better get out there quick. No. No, I have left the tribe, senor, forever. Left them? Why? I am through with such a life. I wish to live like other people, in fine houses, where people will not always call me the beggar and accuse me of stealing. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? I will not return to the tribe. That is why I dance in the street, for enough money to go away. I see. Senor, if you would let me be, what you call, entertainer, in your cafe for tonight... Then I move on, huh? Uh-uh. No, nothing doing, Chica. But for only a few pesetas and a place to sleep... That's I... out, lady. Sorry. It is never mind. I find place. Yeah, right where Greco can get his mitts on you again. Wait a minute. I got an idea, Chica. Hold everything. Hello. Millie, this is Rocky Jordan. Well, Rocky, old son of a gun, how you been? Oh, swell. Still loading that third-rate jade off on the tourist? <laughs> Business is booming, Rocky. What's on your mind? Uh, listen, didn't you say your daughter was getting married and moving to Morocco? Sure did. You had your chance and muffed it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, how about putting up a friend of mine in her room for a couple of days? Oh, sure, Rocky. Anything for you. Had a girl. Be right over. I slipped the gypsy girl out the back way and over to Millie Hawk's place on the Sharia Hufan. Millie met us halfway across the little court and took Chica in like a long-lost friend. I was gone from the tambourine maybe an hour, and when I got back, it was almost dark, and I made the mistake of going back in by the alley entrance. Standing right inside the office was over 200 pounds of gypsy. He gave me three seconds to take in the jagged red scar stretching from his mouth to his temple, the patched eye the red sash around his waist, and the knife in one big fist. Then he opened the conversation. I am Tenasi. Where is woman? I, uh, I know a lot of them. The Hitana. Oh, Chica? What's that to you? I no say what, I say where. What makes you think I know? Tenasi see her come here. Where? Where's she now? Hey, 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 look. Supposing you drop the knife and let's just... I will kill a man who take my woman. You think I took her? See, si, but she cannot love you. She love me. Okay, okay, we'll keep it that way. So why don't you run along? Where you hide her? This knife make you tell. I tell you, she's not here. Ah, look around for yourself. The place is yours. Why you go behind desk? Something in this drawer might interest you. Not the gun! Before I got the gun, Tanasi made a power dive headlong across the desk. I ducked back, grabbed his knife arm quick, and slammed it against the sharp edge of the desk. And the knife hit the floor. Just as I kicked it away, Tanasi landed right on top of me and we had it out. It was a rolling, kicking, clawing fight that Tanasi actually seemed to enjoy, but not me. I finally got my knee in his fifth section and he broke away. Before he was on me again, I had the knife. He did a quick retreat to the door. Can I ask him for coin, sir? I go now. There, you get the idea. You bring my girl. Bring her to our father. For I kill. Just keep going, Tanasi, and take the knife, would you? Well, what can a guy expect when he tries playing godfather to a gypsy girl? Right then, I decided on a return trip to Millie Hawk's place to check up on our star border. I made sure nobody was following me through the dark streets, and just as I got to Millie's gate, I heard soft voices from the inside court, and I waited. Hi, Petros, I knew you would come when I sent for you. Will you take me away from this place quickly? Have patience, Chica, my darling. In two days, we meet in Alexandria, then we'll be gone from here forever. I will wait, Petros. Kiss me now, amor mio. Yeah, looked like I was playing Cupid, too. 
Well, I'm not one to eavesdrop on love scenes, so I coughed a couple of times and went in the gate. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Who's that? Oh, uh, it's all right. Chicken knows me. Oh, Petrus, it is a kind gentleman, Mr. Jordan. This is my, my future husband, Petrus Varga, from Athens, Greece. Harry, the kindness. Uh, Mr. Jordan, I wish to thank you for protecting my little chicken. Oh, don't mention it. You just watch out for Tanasi. Tanasi? When did you see that man? A few minutes ago. He says you love him, Chica. I love Tanasi no more. He is very bad man, like a beast. I, I tell him so. I will have nothing more to do with him or gypsies. That why you're running away? See, si. One is not permitted to marry outside the tribe. What did you tell him, senor? Oh, he doesn't know where you are, Chica. But Tanasi's on the prowl and in a bad mood. He's a violent man. A terrible fighter. Yeah, I found that out. Did he hurt you, senor? No, no. But I got the general impression he'll do most anything to break up your romance. Oh, Petrus, I fear for you, too. Be calm, Chica, my darling. Do you not see that you must hide here? I will go quickly to Alexandria, arrange for passport. Oh, hold it, Petrus. Let's just be sure. Do not say that, senor. His heart is for me. It is all right, Chica. I will prove to him my good faith. Uh, here, sir, is money. What for? Please, as a favor... Would you buy the steamship tickets for us at the office in Cairo? There is a boat leaving for Athens in two days. Wouldn't you rather Chica got them? I, it would not be safe for her. Please, it must be the least expensive. But if you would be so kind. And, and give them to Chica to bring. Sure, sure, I'll get them for you. Oh, senor, you're the most kind gentleman. We shall be indebted to you always, Mr. Jordan. Always. <laughs> All right then, Mr. Cupid tore himself away and went back to the tambourine for the night. And bright and early, I was down at the steamship office to buy the tickets. They came to five pounds more than Petrus had given me. So, like the most kind gentleman Chica said I was, I shelled out the difference from my own pocket. I planned to deliver the tickets to Chica right away, but it didn't work out. Just as I stepped out to the curb, a big hand went over my mouth... I felt my arms locked on either side from behind. I was slammed into an old model G Ford, and off we went roaring through the back streets of Cairo. Three gypsies were playing host. And while one drove, the other two tied my hands behind me. I kept asking questions, but got no answers. And 20 minutes later, we were leaving the outskirts of the city to the east. The old car chugged past a flying red horse sign at the top of the hill bumped off the road and finally parked by an ox cart. Then they were dragging me down a path, and suddenly the whole gypsy camp sprawled before us. Splotches of color mixed up with tumbling bodies of children, cats, dogs, and even monkeys. Women were bending over great iron kettles while men idled by the tents. When they saw me brought in, they were all up and following. At a big central tent, I saw a magnificently built man waiting. His gaudy clothes and jewelry looked right on him. His black eyes gleamed like sword points as he spoke. Senor, you call yourself Jordan? Yeah, that's right, mister. What's this all about? I don't like being dragged around. You were brought here for a good purpose. Well, let's clear it up. Who I'm... are you? I'm El Chacon, the king of the Yetanos. Okay, El Chacon. What do you want with me? It is known that a girl left our tribe to join a man in Cairo. She's got every right. It is also known that she went to your cafe, that you hit her. Supposing I did. Where is Chica now, senor? She's where you won't find her, El Chacon. All Chica wants is her freedom. Freedom? Freedom from what? From your tribe, from the life of a gypsy. She wants something a lot better than all this. And I think she deserves it. Por favor. How you say your life is better than ours? Uh, I can think of a lot of reasons. Look around, senor, at the faces of my people. Do they look unhappy? They sing, they dance, and yes, sometimes they cry. But even crying is good when it washes away sorrow. You say it is you who have the freedom? Uh, yet you are slaves to your houses and your cities. We may wander where we will. Our home is the earth and the sky. It is not you, but we who are free. Now, how you say your life is better than ours? Well, I haven't got an answer for that, El Chacon. However, if one wishes to leave our tribe, we do not stop them. Then what do you want with Chica? She must return that which is ours. Return what? The entire treasure of our tribe. Many jewels of priceless value. Are you trying to tell me Chica stole them? Why else does she hide from us where she cannot be found? Have you thought of telling the police? The law of our tribe is sufficient to deal with our own. Now, where is the girl? And what if I don't tell you? Oh, 
Senor Jordan. You have only to tell us where Chica can be found. If you do not, the methods of Hitanos against their enemies is legend, which you soon may learn. And if that fails, we will not hesitate to turn you over to the Cairo authorities as one who harbors a common criminal. Decide now, Jordan, and quickly. You are listening to Bar Lachi, tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. For a solid hour of laughs, tune in tomorrow night to Leave It to Joan at 6 and Breakfast with Burroughs at 6.30. You'll find Joan Davis at her zany best and the balding Burroughs chuck full of his hilarious brand of repartee. Don't miss the great good time which comes to you every Monday night on CBS. Now we return you to Cairo and tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan, Bar Lachi. Well, hang the sucker tag on me again. I take a liking to this gypsy girl, Chica, find her a good place to hide. I even spend five pounds out of my own pocket to help buy tickets for her and a boyfriend to escape to Athens. Then it turns out she's stolen her wealth and jewels from her tribe. Now I had the choice of turning her over to the tribe in their own form of justice, or of facing their wrath as well as the Cairo police. El Chacon stood waiting for my answer as the encampment crowded around. Speak quickly, Jordan. Where is Chica? You're asking me to break a promise I made to her, El Chacon. A promise to a thief is worthless. Tell me something. Where is another of your tribe, a man named Tanasi? He too hunts for the girl. Yeah, why? Because she won't marry him? How do I know any of you are telling me the truth? You wish then for the Cairo police to decide. I'm just asking why you don't look up Tanasi. How do you know that crazy brute didn't take your jewels? For a moment, you are still here. You call my son crazy brute? I scratch your eyes out. It is true, old woman. Tanasi is crazy brute. You speak so of my son, for that you will see. I looked at El Chacon, expecting him to break it up on the double. Instead, he seemed greatly amused. Even when the two women began pounding and clawing each other. Even when other women pitched into the battle. And even when the men took sides and turned on each other. In less time than it takes to tell, every man, woman, child, dog, and cat had joined in. All except El Chacon. Even he had forgotten about me, and I found myself in the middle. I lost my balance and stumbled over backward into the thick of the battle. With my hands tied, I couldn't do much, and I fell under a dozen feet. All I could do was roll. Something else fell and started to roll just then, a nice shiny knife. I threw myself over so that my hand held the hilt. In a few seconds more, I was behind a tent as the battle still raged. In less time than that, I had my hands free and was running. I didn't stop running until I was over the hill and well into the outskirts of Cairo. Well, there were a lot of things I had to clear up with Chica right then. So when I finally found a taxi, I headed for Millie Hawk's place. Millie was pacing the court when I opened the gate. Oh, Rocky, have you seen Chica? No, but I want to see her right now. Where is she? I don't know. I was away only for a minute, and when I came back, she was gone. How long ago was that? Over two hours, Rocky. Yeah, it looks like you can forget her, Millie. What do you mean, Rocky? She's bound to come back. She left your stuff here. Let me see it, huh? Okay, come on. It isn't much, just the stuff tied in this shawl. All right, give it to me. It's all she had in the world. She was such a sweet little thing. I just knew I shouldn't let her... Mercy me, what are those? Something I hoped I wouldn't find. Ever see rubies before? Rubies? Yeah, and there's plenty more to go with them someplace. But I thought the poor... Right. See you later, Millie. Let me know if you find her, Rocky. Yeah. Well, that wrapped it up. All El Chacon had told me was right. I'd been protecting a common thief. I took Chica's stuff and went back to the tambourine. Back in my office, I reached for the phone, but it won out. Yeah? Jordan, this is Captain Sabaya. Oh, I was just about to call you, Sam. I am sure you were. We have a great deal to talk about. A guy named El Chacon been talking to you already? Indeed he has. A warrant has been signed for your arrest for protection. Yeah, I know. A gypsy girl stole the tribe's jewels, and I've been hiding her. Is this a confession, Jordan? On every count, Sam. I'll be right down. That will save me the trouble of sending for you. 
I can count on you then. Oh, I'll be there. Bring something with me. Bring what, Jordan? I won't tell you now. Only it sparkles. Are you trying to tell me you had the jewels? Uh, it's possible. And maybe I'll have something else. Now what are you talking about? Uh, that remains to be seen, Sam. Just dust out your best cell and sit tight. I knew if that cell wasn't going to be for me, I'd better do some quick cleaning up. I remembered the big gypsy Tanasi had said I'd find him at the Harbada, sort of a Cairo counterpart of an American flophouse. So in a hunch, I took a detour down that way. I found out he had a little room all to himself on the third floor, so I got up the stairs, found the door, and knocked. There was no answer, so I tried the knob. It was locked, so I came up with my heel. The rickety door lock snapped on the first try, and I went in. There, standing back to the wall at the far side of the room, was my little gypsy sweetheart, Chica. Senor Jordan. You picked a bad hideout, Chica. But I am not hiding. How did you find this place? Thank Tanasi for that. Where is he? He went away. Senor, I could not get out. I, I did not want to come sure here. Sure you didn't. You wanted to go to Alexandria, remember? I got a couple of tickets to prove it. Give them to me. I will go now. Quickly. Not yet, Chica. And I got something else of yours. Did you forget these? <gasps> They are like, like rubies. Where did you get them? Out of the stuff you left at Millie's. But I do not understand. I, I have never seen these before. It's too late for that, Chica. They want to tell me where the rest of the so, loot is. <gasps> it is you! Why did you come here, Jordan? Ask Chica why I'm here. I warn you, she's mine. Now you die! Before he could draw the knife, I caught him just below the ribs. He doubled and I crossed one to his chin and stood him up. This time I was on to his style and I felt like fighting. I kept outside his hairy arms and swung from the ankles every time he lunged in. Tennessee was game, but the third time did it. He went down on his face. Senor, what you do to Tanasi? He'll keep right there, Chica. Now let's go. Where do you take me? Right to the police. You can take it from there. I took Chica down the stairs, told the clerk at the desk that the cops would be around for Tanasi. We went right to headquarters where I handed her over to Sam Sabaya. From then on, she was mum. She wouldn't answer anything. Finally, Sam closed the cell door behind her. We hesitated there before going out. Jordan, I must compliment you on your prompt action in this matter. From you, that is a compliment, Sam. You will understand that I knew from the beginning that your motivations were for the best. Yeah, sure. We still have the problem of finding out where the rest of the jewels are hidden. We can hardly hope that Chica will ever tell us. Maybe Tanasi will talk. My men have already picked him up, but if he talks, it will be the first time a gypsy ever told the police anything. Yeah, see what you mean. Listen, leave me with Chica a couple of minutes, huh? Maybe she'll change her mind. As you wish, Jordan. But she will be guarded very closely. Yeah, suit yourself. You see, I agree with the old gypsy saying, it is easier to hold an eel than a gitano. Senor Jordan. Yes, Chica? You are making big mistake. Sure. I did that to begin with. You must believe me. Tanasi found me and he forced me to go to his place. How do you explain the jewels? I cannot explain them. I, I cannot tell you how they got with my things because I do not know. Chica, don't you see that if you'll tell us where the rest of the jewels are hidden, you'll get off a lot easier? But I don't know where they are. I stole nothing from my tribe. <sighs> okay. Oh, senor, senor. You are a, a very kind gentleman. You will not let them keep me in this place. You asked for it, Chica. Please, please. All my life, I I have known only freedom. If they keep me here caged up like an animal, I, I know I will not live. Looks like you should have stayed with your tribe. See? This is not the life that Petros promised me. You must help me, senor. Just think over my advice. So long, Chica. <laughs> I left her then, but her pleading eyes stayed with me. A lot different from the fiery eyes of the girl who danced in front of my cafe the day before. I tried to push him out of my mind, but a few things kept bothering me. Why she'd steal off wealth and jewels, and then show herself by dancing in the streets for a few piastres was something I couldn't answer. The two steamship tickets in my pocket reminded me that Petros was waiting for her. That's when I shelled out some more of my own money for a long-distance call from the tambourine to the Greek consulate in Alexandria. Uh, Varga. Petrus Varga. Have you issued him a passport there? Uh, Mr. Jordan, is this Varga at 
tall, slender faced man with black hair and mustache? Yeah, that fits him. What about it? Petros Varga has not been issued a passport. In fact, he could not possibly get a passport to Greece or anywhere else. You mean he hasn't been there? Certainly not. He hardly dares to show his face in any consulate. Varga is international thief, wanted in a dozen countries. Well, that's the way it is. Uh, could you possibly be one of his victims, Mr. Jordan? Uh, that remains to be seen, mister. Thanks for everything. All at once, I felt good again. I knew now that Chica was right. She knew nothing of the jewels. And there was just one way to clear her. Petrus Varga, who was loaded with hot jewels, but no passport to get him out of Egypt, which meant he must still be in Cairo. Well, there wasn't a chance of my finding him in that sprawling city, so he was going to have to find me. So I took a roll of bills out of my safe, borrowed a pair of dark glasses, wrapped a muffler up around my neck, put on a dirty Panama hat, and went down through the Musky Bazaar until I spotted a familiar character who called himself Shagriff. What do you desire, Fendi? You, uh, see these, Shagriff? Ah, so very much money, Fendi. Well, I got plenty more, and I'm buying jewels. Jewels? But why do you tell me? I don't care where they come from. Get it? Oh, but I have no knowledge of stolen jewels. My room's over the rug shop at the corner. I don't ask questions. But, Fendi, I know of no dishonest person. Here, take this and get moving. Imshi. Ah, Mutashaki, Fendi. Yeah, that's all it took. I hurried to the room I'd rented for the day, and the procession started five minutes later. First, a scared Turk with a handful of sapphires. Next, a woman carrying a baby trying to peddle some pieces of broken glass. Next, a Dutchman with a diamond the size of your fist. I got rid of them one way and another, and... Went on that way all afternoon. At the end of the fifth hour, I was about to call it quits when the door opened, and Petrus Varga was standing before me. You, uh, are the jewel fan? That depends. What have you got? Have I seen you before? You won't see me again. Show your stuff or get out. How do I know I can trust you? You don't. All right, it must be cash. For what? Very well. How much for this? Open it up. Keep your hands away. What are you scared of? Open it. There. Gems of priceless value. Yeah. How much? Hurry. I'll give you 500. What? You stupid. They are worth 20,000. For the risk I take, where do you get these? You think I would tell you? El Chacon, maybe? How did you? That is nothing to you. What are you scared of, Varga? Chick has taken the rap. You're in the clear, aren't you? Jordan. You're a big operator, they tell me. Big enough to steal a hoard in jewels and plant it on an innocent girl. If you think I would tell you... You don't have to. You showed up at Millie's place only to hide a few rocks in Chica's belongings. That's when I came along and you dreamed up the idea about the tickets to Athens. You didn't intend to use them at all. You could spare the money. Stay where you are. You did not think I would come here without a gun. Now use it, Varga. Kill me. Take your bag of rocks. But what do you think you'll find outside that door? What do you mean? Go ahead. You're not scared of a few gypsy knives in your back, are you? You're lying. No one is there. No? Then why wait? Shoot, Vargas. Jordan, listen to me. I, I did it only for Chica. Help me get away from here. For her sake. Okay. Give me the gun. No. No, Jordan. Yes. That's better. Come on, let's go. No. Not out there, Jordan. Please. Not out ah, there. Cut it, Vargas. You're safe. Anyhow, till the police get their hands on you. And that's just where we're going. It took a little nudging, but we finally ended up at headquarters. Well, Sam personally let Cheek and Tanasi out of their cells with a great sigh of relief. Wouldn't you know, right away, the two were in each other's arms. After telling me for the fifth time she'd learned her lesson, Chica went off with Tanasi toward their camp, both as happy as a... Well, a gypsy. Me, I went back to the tambourine a little wiser myself. I was sort of glad nobody was looking when I stooped and picked something up off my office floor. It was a half-wilted rose, but it looked real pretty. Even in the beer mug where I stuck it. Rocky Jordan, starring Jack Moyles in the title role, is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music by Richard Arant. 
Tonight's story was by Margaret Barnum, edited by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman. Now, here is our star, Jack Moyles. Ladies and gentlemen, beginning next Sunday, August 7th, the Rocky Jordan series will be brought to you by Del Monte Tomato Products, the brand you trust for flavor in so many fine foods. So be sure to be listening next Sunday at 5 when... Del Monte Foods presents Rocky Jordan and the story, Gold Fever. Larry Thor speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. How you enjoyed our latest adventure with Rocky Jordan. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow with those Tales of the Texas Rangers. That was the tune they kind of do. It's going live at 5 p.m. GMT. You can email me on brett at touradate.co.uk. I'd love to know your thoughts on our little show. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got a Patreon supporter page, which would be most welcome if you'd like to become a part of that. Patreon.com forward slash Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.